previously in Beholder 2. That's exciting. <laughs> oh, Jesus, fuck! Hi there. I assume you're the one I've been waiting for. My name is George Hamnitz. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Department 6 is considered to be a myth because that's how a person in charge wanted it. More precisely, that's how your father wanted it. Today, every one of us can become a little better. To achieve this, all we need to do- OH MY GOD! No! Dear son, if you are reading this, I must already be dead. Did you think your job was going to be a walk in the park? It's a nest of vipers, Evan, and you must become a goddamn king of the vipers if you want to get promoted. I agreed to take you on board here because your father trusted me and asked me to help you out. That's probably not true. Now it's time to return the favor. You owe me. This pretty girl would love to do something fun if the company is good. Any suggestions? Invited to storeroom. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome back to Beholder 2. Today, on my agenda, I need to... Uh... Wait, I thought I had information on Ferguson. Yeah, I need to get into the line on the vending machine. My sister in the line, so I need to talk to you. Uh, okay, follow me, I'll take you to the line, then you're on your own. Okay. So yeah, I'm doing this thing for my boss, Ferguson. I'm in a real hurry, could you please let me cut in? If I let you in ahead of me, I won't live to see you next spring. Why? Can't you see? I'm 30 kilos underweight. Here, look at my papers. If they don't give me some vouchers for high calorie diets soon, they'll be receiving a complaint from a very unsatisfied pile of bones. Show me your papers, maybe I can help. There isn't any vouchers left for this quarter of the year. Yes, of course, here they are, look. Okay, some time later. Jeez. Thank you. I'm in a real hurry. Could you please let me cut in? Go and steal something. What? I said I'm not giving you any money. Go and steal something, beggar. I'm a threat in you. Have you ever thought that someone might make your answer for words like that? Answer to you, scumbag. Go and steal something, I said. Oh god. This will take forever. And I don't have time for. I'm in real hurry. Could you please let me cut in? And why should I let you through? Because people should help each other. Just what kind of people, I wonder? And what do you mean, help? What happens if I talk nonsense? I'll explain. We're all citizens of the same country. We live under the same sky, breathe the same air. And that's why you think I owe you something. No, mister, I'm not agreeing to that. Oh, fuck. I waste all my time here. Then I don't have time to do any work. And then I won't have any money. I'm in real hurry, could you please let me cut in? No need to be rude, young man. Why do you say I'm rude? Your eyes tell me all you want to cut in line, even though there's a fragile and defenseless girl right in front of you. What happened to all the good men? I'm a compliment you? I'm sorry, it's just... When I stand behind you, I'm so overcome by what I see in front of me that I completely lose my head. Unfortunately, I still need it for a meeting with my boss. You're a naughty one, trying to flatter me like that. You're lucky I have some free time. I couldn't let you get into trouble because of me, could I? Thank you, lady. Thank you so much. And I'm in really hurry, could you please let me cut? Young man, the fact that you're in a hurry is no reason to break with established order. But I'm in really hurry! And just emphasis that your lack of discipline. Looks like your supervisor from the Ministry of Labor isn't worth their salt. You didn't tolerate that sort of thing back in my day. I'm a lie convincingly. You are wrong. My supervisor is a wonderful person. He's just waiting for me to bring him some papers that we can file a report. That's why I'm in a hurry. I can't let him down. Why did you choose to say so? Go ahead. Thank you. 
Oh god. This is the most difficult quest I've done so far. I'm in real hurry, could you please let me cut? Well, I'm also in a hurry. But I'm really in a hurry. I have urgent business too. But don't you see me trying to cut in line? Maybe we should toss a coin. Fine, why not? What do you choose? I choose the leader. Ah, uh, damn, fine, go ahead. Okay, good. Whew. Hello? <gasps> oh my god, is it... Hello? I'm in... I'm gonna use a fake name. Abraham Schneeperson. If you're a Schnee person, I'm ballerina, patriotic theater. But in our ministry, who cares? Go on. Well, recently, my much-loved grandma was sent for the blissful sleep. But the old hag hid some of her valuables in an armchair first. And the chair was then requisitioned by the state services fund. And I really need to know where it is now. Can you help? I can make it worth your while. And what does make it worth your while mean? I'll give you a bribe. You guys take bribes, don't you? So I'll just bribe you, so that you help me. It's not a bribe, sir. It's a contribution to the Ministry Fund. Yeah, whatever. Here's some money. Money for you to take. How much is there? Enough to cover a couple of weeks at a resort. Like old patriots? Better than that. I'm talking about Way of the Leader, or even the Central, if you can do without that fancy electrolysis stuff. Wow. That's what I'm saying. I'll leave this envelope here, alright? Come back tomorrow. I'll try to find something else. Okay, I'm sorry, madam. I'm gonna say nothing and leave. Hello, mister. I have given the fake money to the person. Permission to report in, Comrade Ferguson. I've completed your mission. Excellent. Now if this wise guy doesn't give me every last penny, he's toast. It's a woman. Gender has no bearing on professional character, Evan Redgrave. You've shown me that you're not a complete imbecile like the rest of them. Your next job is to go to the office, collect money and bring it to me. What money? How slow can you be? Government money, Red Grave. The money our moronic visitors give to our idiotic co workers for the good of our great country. Your colleagues already know how much they owe me. And if they forget, Rakovich will remind them. Okay. Right, that's the right answer. To the rear, march, and close the door behind you. Okay, well, I don't have time to. Well, I don't know. My dear Governor Ferguson has ordered me to collect contributions from my colleagues. Contributions? What contributions? To whom? I don't contribute anything to anyone. That is a blatant lie and slander. Well, contributions to the state on his behalf. Ah, you mean the bribe. Say it straight and stop mumbling. You need to bring him an amount that's going to look nice sitting on his safe. Small change won't do. Thousand will be fine. Jesus fuck. Okay, bye now. How the hell am I going to do that? Oh, oh, now I have enough of social points to talk with with you. And talk about family. Do you have any kids, Serena? Why? You wanna be a dad? No thanks. I'm good with the one I've got. Just curious how you managed to do so much. What do you want to know? Mm. How many kids do you have? Had three. One got drafted during the first Western campaign. The second, the war did away with him in a month. The second one showed up again recently. Shell shocked, so she got discharged. Huge fellow with baby brain. Gotta feed him like a toddler. My third one, well, I'm talking too much. Gotta go. Where is your husband? Ate hey, too many pears. What do you mean? I once brought some pears for my youngest, traded for them at the market. And the drunken swam knocked back a bottle of moonshine and ate them all. What happened? Well, I was young, strong. He felt very ill, so to say. I remember the blood gushing out of his nose and everything. That's how he died. Food poisoning. 
terrible business. Okay. Interesting. Colleagues. Ask about the boss. A respectable man. Never blinks an eye passing by. One tough cookie. Even tougher, like that government issued bread. Two bites and your teeth are broken. So I just give him my share and keep a low profile. Away from bosses, closer to the monies, you know. Monies. Huh? Does the boss eat, not eat here? Hi, you nuts. People like him only die in the restaurants. And it's better that way. For them? For me. Food is like that are hard to please. Okay. So did I get another thing? Do you know Peter Dong? Well, I glasses, like cabbage pies, but always says his mom makes them better. Anything else? He once bought a raisin roll, but instead of raisins inside, there were bits of cockroach. These things happen. The poor fella got so sick that the guards came running. Thought it was a terrorist attack. Turns out he's been afraid of insects since childhood. What a prima donna. However, the insects are a delicacy in South Korea. Do you want a bun? No thanks. Actually, I could have taken one. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah. Bye now. And bun lovers, get over here. Wheat buns, dry buns, soft buns, crunchy buns, sweet buns, mini buns, jumbo buns, stuffed and glazed. Alrighty. Never walk around the office empty-handed. Take a folder with you, some papers. It doesn't matter what. Why? They find anyone who doesn't have papers. Oh, okay. Wait, visitor in line. Is it you? Okay, hello. Hello. What can I do for you? You talk to me. Thank you. The thing is, I can't get anyone to help me. My line over there isn't moving at all. I've been waiting for a week now and I haven't moved an inch. How can I help? I'll just keep waiting. Everyone else does. But look at it, really. The window is closed. I just can't keep standing here. Can you check on the employee for that window? What if something's happened to them and I should go stand in a different line? Yeah, sure, okay. What window number is that? Uh, 101. Let's see what I can do. Why would I do this? I don't know. Side quest. 101. Is it my place? It's probably my place. <laughs> Hello, who are you? Bonk, bonk, bonk. Look, what's the cat dragged in? Eyes burning, chest all puffed out. This must be the newcomer, the dearly departed Hamnitz was, Hamnitz was slapping a around the office yesterday. Do you know the most important thing you have to figure out during your first days in the office, rookie? What? It's who you are, buddy. Are you a wombat or a sun bear? What? What are you talking about? That's an elementary question, buddy. Are you a fat and harmless marsupial, marsupial hiding in the hole, or a strong and dangerous bear that can take on even a tiger? <laughs> you office monkeys are so ignorant. Haven't any of you been to Austra uh, Australia or Malaysia? No, I haven't. Have you? No, oh, well, well, no. But my father often traveled there and told me some things. He promised to take me with him someday, but it's a long story. So, buddy, are you a herbivore or a predator? I'm a predator. So nice, my, my choice. We're small but highly dangerous, and we're dying breed in this office full of wombats. Oh, I believe that predators like us should stick together to keep the herbivore population under control. Okay. okay. Hello, I'm Evan Redgrave. Who the fuck are you? Redgrave, the son of Caleb Redgrave. Wow. I'm not sure whether I should keep you close or tell you to get lost. Mm, keep me close. Buddy. It's just your second day at the Ministry, and there are already too many dead bodies around you. Uh, what about Heimnitz? What happened to him? Didn't you see? I did, but I'm not sure I understand. There's nothing to understand. He might have failed to meet his quota or has had some problems with the boss. The main thing is that there's no more Heimnitz. How about the biometric safe? Did you happen to see a biometric safe in his hand? Emmett asked me to get a letter and a biometric safe from his belongings when he was being taken away. 
But I only just remembered about the letter. Where is it? Not so fast, buddy. I'm not your postman. Nobody pays me to deliver your mail. I have a great idea. Poor Peter Dawn seems pretty upset about Hemnitz. Looks like he's about to cry. And who are we if not sympathetic colleagues? I think we just try and cheer him up. Let's play a little prank uh, on him. Us? Yeah. But you do the pranking and we both do the laughing. You want to save, don't you? So let's get on with it. Take Dong for a ride and it's yours. Fair and square. Oh fuck, I have to be an asshole! My sense of humor isn't as refined or subtle as yours. The emotions are the key. Find Dong's weakness and take advantage of them. What do you want? Oh yeah, ask about... Oh, window 101. Anything about that? No. Go on, okay. Ask about the money. Ferguson told me to collect the money. Are you his errand boy now? Yes. It's not my place to argue with the boss. There's no arguing with that fast bastard. So, what about that money? I don't have any money. We're in a recession and the market is stagnating. Do you even know that term? No. Okay, bye. Okay. Anything in here? Probably not. Nope. Alright. What? So, yeah, I need. Shit, I need a lot! Do I have. What happens if I get caught poking around in people's desks? Okay, and I should get going. Margaret Grant took all the screws out of my work chair so they fell apart when I sat on it. Submitted my work reports before I did and changed the name. He must have come to work early to dissemble my chair and see in the report. Reject all applications from visitors. Everyone lost out on their bonuses as a result. Chores of the labor. Receive college leader. We are with you. Great work leader. My leader. Uh, okay. What the fuck? Progress report for the month. No later than 5th of each month. Okay, wait, what? Quarter progress for Rakovich and Ferguson. And you are. Wow, you are a true patriot, aren't you? Citizen reception procedure. New requirements. Okay. Comrade Dong, for exceeding the quota by 300%, you have been awarded. A 29th honorary diploma for labor achievements and an official ministerial note of acknowledgement for second degree. Okay. Okay. Well, you. You really are a patriot, aren't you? Yeah, get away from there. Do you know anything about the. Window 101. Maybe. What exactly do you want to know? Do you know where I can find it? Go left and about 50 meters. Take a look down to the corridor on the right. You should be able to find it from there. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Cool. 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 Red footsteps. How can I go there? Oh, I don't have time for this. Shit. Okay, so... I'll just have to leave now. Bye. Okay, start with the phone. Jesus Christ. Pick up the phone. Call from the wife. Hello. Hello, dear. It is so nice to finally hear your voice. Sorry, darling. I've had so much work. How are things going with a new job? Everything is great. I sit in the ministry, process visitors, shuffle papers around. Have you found out anything about your father? Oh, a whole bunch of things. I'll tell you when I see you. I won't be coming soon, dear, but I understand that it is not a conversation for the telephone. Just do what you have to do. Everything is good with the two of us. I'm so glad to hear that. Could you say it again? 
We're fine, Evan. We don't need anything and everything is calm and ready. Focus on your work, dear. I know this is important to you. What? So tell me about the department. On the apartment. The apartment is fine. Three large room, bed, TV, a bookcase and a kitchen. Our girl will finally have her own room. I really want to see you. So do I. I have to go now. Hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you first. No, you. Okay, bye. And who the fuck is there? And why the fuck are you there? Okay. Good evening. Hello, how can I help you? My name is Cosper Pullman. I'm the manager of this building. Here's my ID. My name is Evan Redgrave and I've already talked to the manager. What was his name? Simon Valois. Simon Valois. That old drunk from the third floor. A manager. That's what he said. And he probably asked you for money. Yes, for the overhaul fund. That scoundrel. If you see him again, chase him away and let me know. I'll deal with him. I didn't know. Thanks for the warning. But let's get down to business. As the building manager, I have to familiarize you with the rules of tenancy. Yeah, sure. What? So, Evan, you live in a building for civil servants. It's forbidden to make noise, litter, keep pets, and lock the doors. What? Lock the doors? Who else can I check that you're following these rules? Anything else? So there are about 550 points here, but I can see you're an intelligent person and can read for yourself. By the way, your face will emit. You will face immediate eviction if you break the rules. Okay, I understand. And don't forget to pay your bills. No, I won't. I turn off the tap. I switch off the light. Yeah, bye. Go. Go. Get the hell out. Stranger, who are you? Why are you? Are you a side quest? Excuse me. Yes? You work for the ministry, right? That's right, how did you know? Nothing special, I'm just a professional observer. You work with Malgrave Glenn, right? Give him this envelope, it's very important. Okay, sure, I'd be happy to help you. There's nothing prohibited in there, right? No, of course not. Just a friendly note. Nothing prohibited. Can I read the said note? Not a suspicious person. What should I do with the envelope? Legrand will skin me alive if I open it, but I'm not his career either. Especially if I'm being used and kept in the dark. I'ma open that envelope. I can't take any risks. I should see what is inside. Marco, we have a problem. Our channels be cut off. The idiot that got the stuff into ministry got caught. Think of a way to get the pills through security. Think fast. Okay. Marco, 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 what are you up to? You are a seller of drugs. Hello, little girl. Why are you still here? Well, she's not going home. It's boring. Okay, insects. I see you've got a whole box circus. Yes, they're trained. They can do anything. I haven't thought them to do anything yet. Mm, I want cool bugs like that too. Can you get a couple for me and put them in a bag? Sure. What will you give me in return? I'll bring you a piece of candy later. Candy makes my teeth hurt. I want hundred. Why do you need that much? What on earth do you need that much money for? We well, had a fight with our building manager recently. He said we need 100 to pay up. And then mom cried. Okay, I'll pay you 100 for the beetles. Here's your box. Drain them well though or they might escape. Okay, bye now girl. I have a bag full of beetles. Wait, wait, Peter, Peter, talk to me. 
Let's ask you about the money. The boss says you're a little behind on something. The report? It's almost finished, I just... No, Peter, not the report, but it's also made of paper, but smaller in size, with numbers and a portrait of the leader on it. Oh, you mean the bribes. I've totally forgotten how Peter Dong taught. It's all here, down to the last coin. Thank you. Ask about health. Are you alright? You don't look so well. No, oh, you know. I can't seem to find the bills my mother gave me. Are you sick? My head is killing me. Aww, I'm sorry. Poor guy. I heard that some people get headaches so bad that they just wish the ground would swallow them up. I'd like that too, but I've only got half granite floors in here. Colleagues, Marco Legrand. Why is this Legrand always picking on you? Because he's a jerk and a bastard. I see. And he knows I'm smarter and it pisses him off. All he's capable of is pulling stupid, often dangerous pranks that he calls harmless jokes. Last time, he stuck an experimental car safety airbag in my chair and it bounced me up to the ceiling. Really? The compression fr fractured, the spine is no joke. It's dangerous. And he just laughed. What could be safer than a safety airbag? I hate him. Scumbag piece of shit. Why don't you complain to the boss? Because the grand's daddy has money coming out of his ears. So his idiot son gets away with anything. Okay. Well, those who want to work honestly can only rely on themselves. Doesn't matter. Just you wait till I get that promotion. Okay. So then, now I will go to... To this, this here then. Marco Legrand. Oh yeah, there. Go. Oh my god! I checked out the booth the customer was referring to and saw the reason straight away. A dead employee isn't much help to anyone. Looks like he had a heart attack, but no one noticed. An inconspicuous life and inconspicuous death. I should tell security. Let them deal with it. Holy fuck. Okay. I'm a punk to you. I will. I will blackmail you. You are the type of person who can probably appreciate some good old blackmailing. What do you want? Refuse the prank. Okay, give the envelope from the man on the street. Marco, someone asked me to pass an envelope to you. Here it is. You opened it, then you knew all about my business. Wanna work together? Tell me. Alright man, there are these substances that relieve fatigue and make people cheerful. They aren't what you'd call legal, but they're highly effective. There's a demand here. These people are working themselves to death. My dealer outside, my customers are inside. And the entrance guards are between them, got it? No. Bring the stimulants into the ministry. And how do I bring them inside? Here, yeah, figure it out. Make a deal with someone or try it yourself. If you're not a coward, I'll pay you well. Okay. I'm just gonna steal that safe from you, mister. Because here's the thing, I don't want to prank. Oh, I don't have enough skill to pick his locks. Well, oh, fuck. Okay, vending machines, the future of trade. Following numerous requests from employees, ministry shall be closing the staff canteens and replacing them with modern vending machines, offering a wide range of essential goods. Canned food, socks, pens, wrenches, handkerchiefs, sex education, pamphlets, and much more. We have discussed this many times, but I can repeat myself if you want. You won't get any money from me until I see you are behaving rationally, and I want to see some actual results. My terms remain the same. Get married and have children, or get promoted, but with your level of diligence, a promotion is out of question, so I'm counting on those grandchildren. Old Grand at moneybags.com. Okay, Old Grand is cutting off funding. Uh huh. Me in the army on vacation. Alright, Legrand. Alright. But Mr. Guard, Mr. 
I have some news for you. Report a dead employee. There's a body in booth 101. Why? Why, 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 what? Why is there a body or why is it in 101? Why don't I know about it? I have no idea. But now you know. I'll handle it. Dismissed. Thank you for your service. That's it. Yep. What's the deal? I have a question for you. Say, what's the penalty for taking prohibited items into the building? It's impossible to take prohibited items into the building. But still, suppose I asked you to smuggle something in, how much would you find me? A uh, fine for bribing an official, a fine for violating the rules, plus my partner's cut. How big is that cut? Ask him yourself. He hasn't been at work for several days. Uh, that doesn't bother you? Working well, around the block isn't good. Find out what happened to him. Then we can discuss our business. Okay, what's your partner's address? I'll stop by his place and check him out. Red G is number 10. That's the address. I'll find out what's going on and come back later. Okay, thanks, bye. Will you be going to... See about that dead body? No? Okay, fine. Where is the... No, it was... Where the fuck was that? Okay, it was this way. I have good news and bad news. Which one do you want first? Bad. The employee from that window died from exhaustion at his desk a week ago. That's awful. That's good news. You're now free to go and stand in a different line. You know what? I think I'll just go home. I wanted to get a reward for turning in bandit books, but I doubt it'll cover my expenses. You can take the book if you want. I'm not carrying it back anymore. Alright, thanks. I know what to do with it. So I need to... Yeah, I don't know how to do this. But maybe I'll just... Apparently I need... If I give him the thousand monies I have now... Hello, Pete. Maybe you'll tell me something while at it. Ask about the results of Operation Street Secret Visitor. Oh, yeah! Comrade Ferguson, how did Operation Secret Visitor end? We got the thief. We got one rat and sent the message to the others. Okay. Cool. What do we have in this floor? Do I have nothing else to do? Probably not. How does the first floor manage to meet all the quotas? After all, the, they get bigger and bigger all the time, but the number of employees doesn't change. The first floor? I'm the only one who does anything around here. I work my fingers to the bone while they stay about to lounge around in their boots. The first floor is the foundation of the whole ministry, and I will prove that they can't manage without me. Manage what? None of your business. Okay. And about your task, boss, Mr. Boss? You get lost in the bathroom or something, where's my money? I mean, the state's money. There you go. Great. I do love round man numbers. Here. Let's talk. Do you think that we bosses have it easier at grave? Not at all. That's some small minded thinking. Wait, really, what now? Don't look at me like that. We're just people like you. Better than you, of course, but like you. Okay, what? And you know, everyone needs a, to have a bit of fun sometimes. Nothing fancy. Some wings, some hot dogs, the strongest moonshine you can get on your hands. Okay, and I have a cat behind the screen, so that's why if my face cam goes all fucked up, that's because of that. I've got enough fancy booze, enough to get the whole ministry good and merry, but I could do with something simpler, something more salt of the earth. Um, what is it that you want? Why are you just sitting there, looking at me like the schoolgirl admiring the leader? Is there something you're not understanding? Your boss wants to have a good time. Make it happen. Okay, sure. Understood. As you wish. Damn straight. What are you still standing there for? Get out of my sight. Okay, I will. Now I need more money to... I actually might have to work this day. Well, that sucks. I'ma go and call Mr. Cunningham. The Anonymous Trust Service welcomes you, Evan Redgrave. Select the purpose of your appeal. 
Submit information about colleagues. Oh, submit information about colleagues. I have information for the ministry. You made the right choice, Evan. Personal call. Take part of the... Apply for promotion. I could do that. But I still don't have the biometric save, so I don't do that just yet. Take part in the competitive environment program. Dear employees, submit your applications for the part in the Brave 4 program. Want a promotion? Join three colleagues in a career race and get them to give up. One job, one winner. Get your promotion if you're not afraid of a little competition, that is. No, I don't want that. Personal call. Personal calls from the office phone are prohibited. Okay, so I have to go home then to make that said personal call. Torstai, what the hell are you doing there? Okay, I should go to work now. Oh, Peter, why are you looking so glum? Just the other day, as I was working responsibly as always, and when I accepted an application from this one citizen, he just thrust a bottle of liquor through the window as a thank you and left. No idea what to do with it. I don't drink. Mom doesn't allow it. Should I perhaps give it to Comrade Ferguson? He'll find it anyway. I'll take it to him. Thanks for helping me out, Evan. I'm a bit scared of him, to be honest. I'll try to deal with insects. They're harmless. You wouldn't say that if you'd be given a sleeping bag filled with bedbugs at the summer camp for the children of junior employees. Those bugs are a fixture of Class J apartments, actually. And do you fight them with spiders in your Class J apartments? No, with repellents. Repellent? Never had those in summer camps. They were considered extravagant. Some professor even wrote an entire article about the consequences of using propellants. Like there hadn't been enough studies to show how they affect future generations' health and their chemical composition is like harmful to the environment. Sounds like an excuse for supply shortages. An excuse that meant they made us catch hobo spiders, the forest, stick them in our sleeping bags and wait for them to deal with the bed bugs. Ooh. Well, that's horrible. You can say that again. I've hated all insects ever since. Okay, by now then, I need to work. Unfortunately, I need to work. Oh wait. Okay. Sorry, Peter. I'm gonna do this um, prank on you now. I really don't want to, but I want that biometric save from uh, the. Ah, so red grave. Oh, screwdriver. Security cameras detected your theft. There will be a trouble at this checkpoint. Okay, I will put that back. Shit. Okay, well, there will be trouble at the checkpoint then. That sucks. Now I need to get some work done and get myself some money. Oh, oh, and we get a... Unfortunate cutscene of the of this. I'm really sorry, Morris. No, you're not Morris. You're Peter. I'm sorry. I'm oh Jesus Christ! Did you die? Oh my God! Did I kill him? Oh my God! I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry about that. There's probably going to, yeah, the information thing he said, there will be trouble at the checkpoint, so let's see what kind of trouble am I in now. Oh! Oh yeah, because I left the screwdriver in the... In that, uh... The... Blah, 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 back into the drawer, so... What? Who are you? Evan Redgrave. Yes, and you are? Your friend sent us. They want you to help us deal a crushing blow to the bureaucracy. This is some kind of joke. What friends? What blow? What are you talking about? No, I've been watching you for a long time. Have you heard of the new tomorrow? No? Those people who fight the great leader? Yes, they want to paint us as murderers, terrorists and leader haters, but we are fighting against oligarchy, bureaucracy and human rights violations. 
Do we even have any oligarchs? See, we're doing our job. Okay, you blow. What are you talking about? We're going to blow up the new wing of the ministry building. And when it opens, thousands of new bureaucrats will start working there, and we won't be able to get in the way of their work without harming people. We're not animals, Evan. And we don't kill people for nothing, so we need to blow it up now while it's still empty. We need you to meet our man in the ministry to give him the microchip and password that activate the bomb. Why me? Like I said already, we've been watching you. You have a strong personality, Evan, and you're capable of taking real action. There's so much you can change in the ministry, Evan. Really change, you know. We need people like you. Do you like the uncontrolled growth of the bureaucratic apparatus and the simultaneous strengthening of its total totalitarian totalitarian functions? Honestly, our plans aren't so great either. But we can pay you well. Three thousand. Okay. That's a lot. Sure, I agree. The new tomorrow gives money today and spares no expenses for tomorrow. I'm glad that we came to an agreement. Here's the microchip. The password is the sky is always blue over the statue of the leader. The man you need is Nicholas Page. He's a career. Got it. All right. Don't fail us, Evan. The new tomorrow depends on you. Okay. Who is calling? There's another person behind the door. Okay, pick up. Call from James. Okay, hello, James. How's the investigation going? Ferguson isn't very talkative, especially when I talk about my father. I recently learned that Ferguson is putting together some kind of party. It's not easy to get in. No one knows what goes there. A boring ministerial meeting to report all the work that has been done? Possibly. It's a good opportunity to get some valuable, valuable info out of Ferguson. I can't get into an event like that, so I won't want you to install a camera. I need to know what's going on in there. Where will I get a camera? Talk to your building manager or security. Install the camera in Ferguson's office and pass it on to me after the party. Okay. Building manager? How do you know that he has surveillance cameras? Because this is the beholder, of course he has. If he doesn't have any cameras, then they're already in your apartment. Okay. Why would security give me a camera? Because every employee is about allowed a camera for observing their colleagues. Why can't you just give me one? What a stupid question, Evan. The fewer links there are between us, the lower the likelihood of you getting caught. Okay. Uh, but I have some information about Peter Ferris Ferguson. I talked to my colleagues about Ferguson. And what did you find out? Nothing unusual. They didn't mention anything that could be used against him. Keep watching. We need to find a good reason to arrest him. And submit this information via the report line. You could do with some more authority. Okay, bye. Who is it this time? Would it be the building manager? Oh, yes, it is. Will you give me a... A camera? Hello? Hi, mister? Oh, Hello, Evan. I don't suppose you've seen that your downstairs neighbor's cat, have you? White, fluffy, affectionate? But rules don't allow pets. You're not easily fooled. What do you mean? Can I trust you? Of course. But you can decide that for yourself. You look reliable. I suspect that your downstairs neighbor has a cat. I got that part. Do you, you can enter any apartment, right? Can you check? Oh, I've checked many times, but he hides it well. Anyway, Evan, I just need a witness to say that they saw the cat. Why do you need one? Again, strictly between us, I have a friend who is ready to pay twice as much for the apartment. And if you help me, I'll lower your rent. I give you my word. So have you seen your neighbor's cat? But is there really a cat? Definitely. I swear on my mother's life. I heard meowing myself. Well, I haven't seen it. Sorry, Casper. But I can't lie, I haven't seen any cats, unfortunately. Are you sure, Evan? Think hard about whether you want to live in an ap this apartment happily and for a long time. I haven't seen it. Yes, I'm sure. Well, I thought more highly of you. Farewell. Something, something tells me that we'll meet soon under the less pleasant circumstances. Always glad to see you, Casper. Okay, go now. 
How can I go to... Oh, like this. Ah, go to the square, walk around the building, go to the partner's guard, buy a camera. Oh, okay, let's go to the partner's house. Dirty streets, shady characters in doorways, and the overbearing stench of poverty. The guard's home is located on the very outskirts of the city. Signs of repair work indicate that the owner is trying to look after the place. You stop in front of the cracked but still sturdy oak door. Knock on the door. Scratching the belly under his t-shirt, a huge unshaven man opens the door. Despite his menacing appearance, he looks friendly and gestures you in. It's a little damp inside, there are bottles and cigarettes, cigarette butts everywhere, and the smell of poverty hangs in the air. A few short cropped children's heads look out of the back room, but immediately hide. Tell him why you're here. As soon as you mention the god who sent you, the man begins to frown and grind his teeth. He says he's not going to help that jerk and that he can kiss his... Well, apparently he's not in a good mood to hear for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. I'm gonna ask for more details. A little push was all it took to get the man to tell you everything. Before becoming a security guard, God, he worked as a debt collector for a local gangster. When his boss was killed, he got a job in security and started selling confiscated items to pay off his card debts and buy booze. Everything was going well until his new partner found out about it and threatened to tell everything. So he had to return to his usual line of business, kicking the debts out of poor bastards. And if his former partner sends someone else to him, he'll regret it. You thank him for the information and leave the building. Oh, shit. Okay, and then I have to work again like oh, shit tomorrow just in to get these get the management bill paid. But I'm gonna leave this episode of Beholder 2 right here. Thank you all so much for watching this. I'm still alive. Woo! And yeah, <laughs> I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you again next time.